What's up, Videla friends? It's Yanis here, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to go over how you can build this Streamlit app from scratch. And what this app does is that it uses Python in order to call the Binance API and pull some data in. Then we are running correlations of Bitcoin price against every other pair we are listing and then we have all the correlations over here and also the sensitivity, which is the percentage change. So basically when Bitcoin moves up 1%, how much is these coins going to move? That's the sensitivity analysis. Then we are also plotting the Bitcoin price over here so we can visualize it. And then we are also running predictions. So we are running a regression model and we are saying if the Bitcoin price hits 100K, for example, how much is dot over here? We can change this, by the way. So we can predict on any pair we have over here in our list. So if Bitcoin hits 100K, how much is dot going to be worth? And over here, you can see that the current value of DOT is 691, but the predicted value, if Bitcoin price hits 100K, this is how much DOT is going to be. And then if I scroll down, we also get a scatter plot to visualize the relationship of Bitcoin and DOT. And we also get the candlestick chart of the selected symbol over here. Additionally, this app is variable, so we can actually change the interval into the one hour and then for the past uh, three days, for example, click get data. And this is now going to call the Binance API and pull the hourly data for the past three days, run correlation and sensitivity analysis and plot the Bitcoin price. Then we can go on and call our regression model to make predictions again. You can see it's still running because we are running correlations on 50 different pairs of things. There we go. We have the correlations on the hourly data. An important note here is that this video is actually part two. In the first video, we went through all the functions we are going to use in this video in the app. So in the first video, we have explained the function to pull the data, the function to calculate correlations and sensitivity, and the function to make predictions, and also the code to make the candlestick plots. In this video, we are going to go over how you can put everything together and create the Streamlit app. So if you haven't watched the first video, I suggest watching that first to understand the functions and then come over here to watch the second video. And before we start this, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the first thing we need is our libraries. So make sure you have all these libraries installed on your environment. If you're missing any of these libraries, so for example, the Binance.client one, then please run pip install and then uh, python-binance as we have explained in the previous video. Right, the next thing we have is that we need to specify our API key and API secret. So you should go in your Binance account, click on profile, API management, and from there you can create a new API and that API is gonna give you your key and the secret so copy it, paste it over here, and then run this command, client equals client, pass the API key and the secret in order to initialize your Binance client. Then we need to specify a list with all the pairs we are going to use because we cannot possibly use all the pairs. We need a number of pairs. For this bit, I created this function over here, the top 50 symbols. So this function goes into Binance, pulls all the tickers and their volume, and then it limits the top 50 tickers, which is symbols, is the same thing, and it returns a list with all of those. And as you can see down here, I get the list, I copy this, and then I paste it over here. So it's actually hard pasted, it's not variable, so it's not changing. 
Next, we're gonna have our function to pull the data. So we have explained this function in the previous video. And then we are going to have our function to calculate correlations and sensitivity. Again, we have explained this function in the previous video, so I'm not gonna explain it again. Next, we have our last function, which is the function that makes the predictions. So again, we have explained it, so I'm just gonna move on. Next, we are just uh, specifying the layout of our app. So I'm saying st.setPageConfig layout equals white. So I want to use all the spades in my streamlit app. That's what it means. Uh, going back, I am adding my sidebar image. So this image is called pick one. Here I am opening the image and here I'm just printing my image into my sidebar. And this image is actually this image you see over here on the sidebar. Next, if I go back, I am adding a sidebar header and then in the sidebar, which is here, I need to add all my inputs. So I start with a selection box, so the intervals and the list of the selections is these options over here. So if I click, you can see only those options. Next, I am adding a slider and this slider has a minimum value of 1 to 30 and it's actually the look back period in terms of days. And then this code over here, it takes the input from the sidebar and is converting it into a value so we can actually use it in our calculations. Next, I am adding a button and the button is the get data, which is uh, this button over here. So after we make our selections, we click get data and this is going to run our functions. Next, I am adding another section in my sidebar, which is the prediction inputs. So this section over here. First, I add uh, a sidebar selection box, which is basically selecting the target symbol. So the symbol we are going to make predictions on. And then I'm adding another number input over here. And this is the value that we are going to add for Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin hits 80K, how much is DOT going to be, for example? Click predict, and this is going to call our model to make predictions. Next, we are saying if get underscore data button is clicked, so this button over here, then I want to run my first function. So we have explained this in the first video. Then I want to run my second function, which is calculating the correlation store it into this correlation df and then i want to store the crypto data in session and the correlation df in session again the reason i'm storing them in session is because our app is actually broken down into two sessions once we load the app we only have the first session you see i have refreshed the app and there is nothing now if I click get data, the first session is going to run. And then if I click the predict, the second session is going to appear. That's why I'm storing it. Because if somebody clicks the prediction before the first session, then we're going to get an error. Right, going back, let me scroll in again. So I am loading my peak 2, which is basically uh, the picture we're going to see at the top. This is still running. And then I am printing it. Uh, then I am adding this markdown for the subheaders and this markdown is basically some custom CSS to change the style of our subheaders. So we are setting the border radius, the padding, the alignment and the font size and this is going to apply on all of our subheaders. So these subheaders and also the subheaders when we get the predictions which is these ones you see over here. Right, going back again, uh, I am adding a title called Crypto Strength Analysis Correlations and Predictions, which is our title uh, over here. Uh, next, I'm saying if crypto data in session, so if somebody has actually clicked the first button and we have data, I want to calculate the latest Bitcoin price and then the target variables latest price. So this target symbol is actually the symbol you see over here, in our case, Ethereum. And the reason I'm doing it is so I can print them as you can see over here. Right, going back, let me uh, scroll in again. 
Next, I am saying the predicted price is none because once we load the app, we don't actually have a prediction. First, we'll have to select, then we'll have to make prediction. So if somebody clicks the prediction button, then we are going to run our prediction function we have defined above and we are going to store it in predicted price. Then we are going to split our page into three columns. And the reason we do this is so we can actually print our cards. So the first card is going to be our Bitcoin latest price and it's going to use this CSS code as styling. Then our second card is going to be the target latest price for the target symbol. So if you see over here, we get the target symbol title and then we also get the price. That's why we have the title and the price over here. And then for the predicted price card, if the predicted price is not known, so if somebody clicked on the predict, I want to print the predicted price. However, if somebody did not click it, I just want to say predicted price not available. So if we refresh our page, we are going to see not available because no one has clicked the prediction yet. Right, moving on, what I'm doing here is that I'm saying if crypto data is in session, so if somebody already clicked the get data, which is this one over here, then I want to split my page into two columns. On the left hand side, we are going to have our correlation coefficients and sensitivity data frame, which is this data frame over here. And then on column two, I want to have our candlestick chart. So this chart you see over here. And all of this code we have explained in the previous video, which is basically a copy paste from yeah, this code over here. Right, going down, what do we have next? Uh, section two. So for section two, which is our predictions, we are saying if the predicted button is clicked and crypto data is in session, so basically if somebody clicks this one first and then this one, then we are going to split our page into two columns, as you can see over here. On column one, we are going to add a subheader and we are also going to plot a scatter plot. Our X axis is going to be the Bitcoin price and our Y axis is going to be the target symbol price. So if you scroll down here, let me zoom out so it's nicer. You can see that this is the Bitcoin price and this is the Ethereum price, which is the target symbol. Right, going back uh, over here, I'm just updating the layout. I don't want a title and I want the template. And then down here, I'm just plotting my scatter plot. Next on column two, I want to add a candlestick chart again. So again, it's a copy paste code from above. But in this case, I want to use the target symbols data. So over here, we actually have the Ethereum candlestick chart and not the Bitcoin one, which is the one above here. All right, going back, and the last thing we have to do is to actually run our app. So we have everything in one cell, and now we are ready to deploy our app. To do this, we're going to have to create a new file, a .py file, and then open it from Visual Studio Code and then run it from there. So the steps are that you have to click on File, New, and then Python File. Then I'm going to go back. I'm going to copy all of our code from here and I'm going to paste it into that file. So copy, paste, change the title into Binance uh, Correlations V2, uh, rename to file, save all. Then I'm going to copy this file and put it in the location I have all of my pictures so I can actually run everything from the source file. Uh, so I'm going to go over here. In my case, is under C, users, uh, PT, and then it should be somewhere here. There we go. Binance Correlation V2. I'm going to cut this and I'm going to paste it into Binance uh, Correlations, which is over here where I have everything else. And now I'm going to open this file using Visual Studio Code like this. Next, I'm going to copy and paste my key and my secret and cut it out of this video. There we go. I have pasted everything in. And the last thing we have to do now is that we need to run 
stream lead run and then the name of our file let me get the name of our file is binance underscore cc2 there we go so i'm going to copy this and i need to run this in a new command prompt so uh, make sure everything works by running the file first so if you don't have an error here it means that everything works fine and then i'm going to create a new command prompt i'm going to paste that stream lead run binance cc version 2.py click enter and this is going to open a new tab in your browser with your new Streamlit app. There we go. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I am going to start by getting the hourly data for the past, I don't know, five days. Click get data. And this is going to pull the data from Binance now, run correlations, run sensitivity, and then plot the candlestick chart of Bitcoin on the right hand side. There we go. We have all of our data. It looks fine. Next, we are going to try and predict something. So let's select uh, XRP, for example, when the Bitcoin price hits, I don't know, 120K, for example, uh, click predict and let's see the value of XRP. There we go. We can see that when Bitcoin is on 120, we predict that XRP is going to be 2.82 based on our regression model over here. However, again, don't take any decisions based on this model. As you can see, it's not a straight line, so it's not that accurate. It's just an estimate based on the data we have. I suggest using this analysis in combination with other analysis that we're going to use in this channel before you take any decisions and make any investments or take any trades. Right, so this is it for this video. If you have any questions or any ideas, please let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed watching this video and you've gained enough value, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos.